Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit who resurrected our Lord Jesus Christ, may He resurrect those who are still dead in their trespasses and sins. And may He sustain those who are remaining in the faith, those who are going through struggles and disappointments, tribulations, sadness. May the Holy Spirit come to direct you, to guide you, so that you won't fall into temptation or that you won't allow yourself to be carried away by the circumstances. This is the will of God for all of us, those who are on the path towards salvation, be saved, receive this assurance of salvation be made strong in your faith. Those who are already saved, then may you continue in the faith and living from faith to faith. And those who are not yet saved, but are searching for salvation, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Those who are sick, those who are ill, not in the soul, but in the body, then be healed right now, be delivered right now, wherever you are and whatever is the infirmity that is tormenting your body, be free. Do you believe in this right now? Do you believe? Do you believe that in the name of the Lord Jesus you are healed? Very well. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and preach the gospel, the word of God. Preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And these signs will follow those who believe. Those who believe. What are the signs that will follow those who believe? They will be healed. They will be healed. You will be healed. Do you believe in this? Then be healed right now from this curse that is in your body. Because I know, I'm certain, that this is God's will for all of us. May the Holy Spirit enlighten each of you. So, now, yesterday we spoke about the prayer and how a prayer brings us closer to God. Your prayer makes you get closer to God because you connect yourself to Him. You connect your thoughts to someone that you don't see, feel or touch. But there is an assurance that He exists. There is an assurance inside of you that He is. Therefore, you pray. You pray because you believe. Because if you didn't pray, then you wouldn't believe. But because you pray, you believe in that person that you don't feel, see, or touch, but you know he exists. And he, who is a reward, a blesser of those who seek him, then for sure we will hear your prayer. Let me complete, or let me continue, actually, this subject concerning prayer. Jesus teaches us to pray. Many people say, Bishop, what am I going to pray? What am I going to say to God in, when I pray? They even have many things to ask from many people. But when it comes to talking to God and asking God and praying to Him, then they feel stuck. They, they are speechless. Pay attention. And I'll tell you what I, I'll give to you what I have been practicing throughout these years, these many, many years. I've been strengthening myself in the prayer that Jesus teaches us to say, because this prayer of the Lord's Prayer 
is complete. It's complete. It's perfect. It's the prayer that once said, if it's said with sincerity, if it's said with faith, if it's said according to what is written, then this prayer will bring to you not only firmness in your faith, but it will make you take possession of the blessings of God and will make you keep these blessings in your life. And also, it will make you overcome evil. Pay attention to what Jesus said. In this manner, therefore, pray. And then there's a column there. And then, He continues, our Father in heaven. So the first thing, you direct your prayer to the eternal Father, to the first and only. You direct your mind, your thoughts to someone who is invisible, untouchable, that you can't feel, but he is the Father, he is the generator. Father means the one that generates, so he generates all things. So when you direct your thoughts, your word to the, our Father, then you are directing your thoughts, your word to God Father in the name of the God Son, directed by the God Holy Spirit. You are praying to the God Father in the name of the God Son, by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, or, or God Holy Spirit. So he says, his first request, hallowed be your name. This is the first request. Jesus doesn't say, glorified be your name, praised be your name. No, hallowed be your name. In my case, I pray, hallowed be your name in my life in the life of all your servants, all of your people. What does it mean to be hallowed? God, more than anything else, He wants us to be living witnesses of His here on earth. Jesus resurrected and He said, I will send another helper that will be with you forever, which is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in us sanctifies the name of Jesus, which means that he bears witness in us that the God whom we can see, feel, or touch exists because you can tell the person that is before you, that is suffering, that is groaning, or that is living sin. You can tell them, look, People who say like this, oh, I don't believe in God, I don't see, I don't feel or touch Him anyway. Then you can say, look at my life. Look at my life. Look at my character. Look at my way of being, of living my life. By looking at my life, you're going to see God. This is it. When you sanctify the name of the Lord Jesus, then people see Jesus in you. It's what Jesus said to Thomas, if I'm not wrong. He said like this, Lord, show us the Father. And then Jesus said like this. Oh, it was Philip, actually. Philip said, show us the Father. And Jesus said, whoever sees me, sees the Father. Whoever sees me, sees the Father. Whoever sees the Son, sees the Father. Whoever sees the Son sees the Father. And it's like this nowadays as well. When you see a child that is rebellious, cruel, evil, a child that likes mess and injustice, then you look at that child and say, oh, who is that child? Or oh, is the child of so-and-so? Oh, yeah, I already knew. I could see. You see, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree indeed. So Jesus wants to be sanctified 
Above all things, through our behavior, through our character. But this is only possible if the person has the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, then how can we be the image of God in this world? So, the first thing that Jesus teaches us to ask is, Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Whoever prayed, whoever is saying the Lord's Prayer, will say, Hallowed be your name in my life. Hallowed be your name in my life. Pay attention. The second request, your kingdom come, which means, may you come to reign in my life, in my thoughts, in my feelings, in my body, make my body your dwelling place and direct me according to your will, which is the second most important thing. First, he wants to be hallowed in your life, and then secondly, he wants to make his will through your life. And third, he asks, your will, so give us this day, or, or better yet, he says, hallowed be your name, is the first request. The second one, your kingdom come, and then the third one, your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven, which means, let your will be done in my life on earth as it's done in heaven. Three requests. Three, the first three requests. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, and your will be done. Three things that are extremely important, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallowed be your name, the Father, your kingdom come, Jesus, the Son, God's Son, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, the Holy Spirit. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are here in these three requests identified in this prayer. They are identified here. First, hallowed be the name of the Father. Second, come the kingdom of the Son. And the third, that the Holy Spirit will make your life what the Son, the Lord Jesus, made here. That through your life, the work of God will be completed. So three requests that you have to ask, and I say this prayer, not just repeating, Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be your name. No, it's not like before that I would say, Virgin Mary, this and that and the other. No. Or Our Father, what in heaven, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not, it's not what it is. It's not how it is. A prayer to God, to the Almighty God, you say in a conscious manner. So when I pray, I pray thinking. I imagine myself before the throne of God, my Father, or our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. I want my life to sanctify your name that others may see you in my life. The first request. And then the second. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come in the life of everyone that we reach out to. Your kingdom come upon the lives of all those that we reach out to or those who reach out to us. And your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which is what Jesus did. Jesus, the Son, did the will of the Father until the end, until death. Until death. So, when a person has this purpose to sanctify the name of the Lord Jesus, to pray and ask for his kingdom to come 
and make itself present in their life. And that His will will be done. Then, in these three first requests, the person already has, indeed, if they truly pray, placing all of their strength in these words, then they have the assurance. The Holy Spirit gives them the guarantee that their prayer is being heard because it is according to His will. Because it's Jesus who said, He's the one who said that. In this manner, therefore, pray. So that's how we should pray. So this is a secret, my friend. You have been saved, you are baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you want to continue firm in your faith until the end. Say the Lord's Prayer every day. I do that early in the morning and in the evening as well, besides the usual prayers that I usually do. And I will speak about this another time, the prayer without ceasing. Then, yes, after I ask the Father for his name to be hallowed in my life and for his kingdom to come and for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. You can imagine his will being done on earth as it's done in heaven. Oh, this is too strong. Then, after that, you can present your daily needs. Give us this day our daily bread. What do I need today? I'm not going to ask anything for tomorrow or for after tomorrow. Lord, tomorrow I'll have a problem. No. Give us this day our daily bread. And what's our daily bread? It's our daily needs. What are your needs? I don't know. But when you say, give us this day our daily bread, or give it today, Lord, to me, then he will provide for your physical needs and your spiritual needs according to his will this day. So he will meet the needs that your body, your soul, and your spirit have in this day. And so he says like this, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors which means that you get rid of your sins, the sins you've committed consciously or unconsciously, you set yourself free from them because you say, Lord, forgive me everything that I've done wrong, wash me, cleanse me. Just as I also forgive those who've done something against me. This means that you ask him, you ask the Father that he will forgive you according to the way that you've been forgiving those who have offended you. That means that we have to keep forgiveness up to date. You cannot be owing forgiveness. Forgive our debts, Lord according or as we forgive our debtors. Jesus said that if your brother or if anybody sings against you and, and offends you seven times, then you have to forgive them seven times in that day. Actually, it was Peter who asked. He asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive? Seven times? He said, no, 70 times seven. 490 times we have to forgive daily if we are offended by the same person, then we have to forgive indefinitely. Therefore, my friend, this is a secret, because you keep your salvation up to date, your conscience clean. Oh Lord, I praise you, because I will have the daily bread today, I, I have your forgiveness, as also I forgive others, and 
e eu sinto em paz. I will be at peace. Depois você ora. And afterwards you pray. You say you use the prayer as as a tool, a tool of maintenance você of your salvation. Nosso, para you say the Lord's prayer in order for you to conquer, to conquer your daily bread. E ora. And you pray. A sua for your conscience to also be clean and washed, purified. And there's more. Assim, He says like this. And do not lead us into temptation. Do not lead us into temptation. The one who conducted Jesus to temptation was the Holy Spirit. It wasn't the devil. Jesus was taken to the desert by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, he says, do not lead us into temptation. Do not lead us into temptation. It's a request. This means that you protect yourself with the Lord's prayer. Keep me, Lord, from falling into temptation, in other words. Deliver me from falling into temptation. And finally, it says, but deliver us from the evil one. The evil one here is the devil and everything he does. Deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. Every day, in the morning and in the evening, I say this prayer. And it works. Because, thank God, he has been protecting and keeping me and so on and so forth. And then finally it says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Which means you can do all things. Only you are worthy of all the honor, of all the glory, of all praise. Therefore, my friend, the Lord's prayer is not just... Our Father, what you have a brother? No, no, it's not like this. You pray consciously. You add spirit. You add your soul to this prayer. In every word you say, you can be certain that your day will be protected. You are going to be kept from all evil. You are going to have the daily bread. You are going to have your conscience clean, washed. Temptation may even come, but you are not going to fall into temptation. You are going to be kept and protected, and so on. So do this. Say the Lord's Prayer every day. Every day. Every day. But pray. It's not to repeat the words. It's not just to say what is written there. But it's to speak and put your soul, your conscience, all of your strength into this prayer. Okay? Well, we are going to end it here then. And today, Thursday, as it always happens, is the day of the love therapy. If you want, if you desire to learn, learn how to be loved. How can I be loved? I want to learn how to be loved. Because I don't know. Then first you have to learn how to love. And the love therapy speaks about this, this subject. Before you sow, you have to learn how to sow. Before you give, you have to learn how to give. Because if you don't know how to give, then you won't know how to receive. Those who give, receive. Those who offer, those who give their offerings anyhow, they don't do what is right. You have to learn how to give so that you can receive. The Love Therapy tonight at 8 p.m. in the Temple of Solomon and in all the universal churches of the Kingdom of God. The married pastors who are well married and who have... Uh, a reference of, of marriage, they can speak, they can teach you what they are experiencing themselves. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.